All right, so today I'm going to paint a tactical marine, uh, specifically a white scar. I thought this was relevant since if you're watching live, yesterday all, all these lovely tactical marines gained an extra wound. So I assume, as the title implies, um, that tactical marines are going to rule the world now. Um, I've already done some steps in the interest of time. Uh, I primed him with Grey Seer from Citadel. And then I did all over him. I used Apothecary White and just painted completely all over him. Uh, I didn't do the Bolter or the Bolt Pistol because they're not going to be white. But everywhere, all over the armor, I did Apothecary White. I also realized something... Uh, that's kind of exciting, at least in my world, probably for nobody else. But Bob Ross always used to use liquid white uh, on his canvases. And this is apothecary white. And as you can hear, it's liquid. So basically, me and Bob Ross are the same. Um, he uses liquid white, and I use white that is liquid. So, we're going to go on to the third, I guess the second real step of the armor, and that's going to be to dry brush all over it um, with another white. Um, and I'm going to use, for this, straight from the pot while I'm in a department meeting. Priorities. Exactly. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to dry brush uh, with Vampiric Highlight. It's one of my favorite whites. Uh, it's from Reaper. It's a white I use pretty often. And I'm going to use a makeup brush to dry brush with this. Uh, so I'm going to use a brush about, you know, pretty sizable brush. I'm just going to load up the bristles. And then get most of the paint off. But just make sure that all the bristles have paint on them still. And then I'm just going to dry brush all over the figure. This is almost a, an over, uh, over brush, more than a dry brush, um, but I'm still going to call it a dry brush. You can really, it's really up to you as heavy or as light as you want to go with it. Just making sure to get all over the armor. This probably, you won't be able to see this change too much on camera, um, but it does make a difference. Uh, in person, your miniature will go from very gray to less gray and much more white. You really honestly don't need this step. You could paint a white scar perfectly without it, but so there's that done. Um, for these, just a unrelated tip or not exactly only for this guy. Um, I usually just leave if I use a light color like this white. I'll just leave it in the bristles. I won't even, um, I won't even like put water on this and wipe it off or anything. It'll be um, because of the f how fine the bristles are on these makeup brushes. Just a little bit of light color like that will be fine. And if I need to go back to it later, if I get it wet now, it won't be dry for a considerable amount of time. So I just will leave them like that. So the next step we're going to do, which is can be a tedious step, but I'm hoping I can get it done pretty quickly, is uh, Basilicum Gray. And I'm just going to do a targeted wash, basically into all of the creases, crevices of his armor, panel lines of his armor. Um, this will just give us a little more contrast so we're not, so it's not completely white everywhere. Um, and I am using Basilicum Gray instead of Null Oil. Now, this would be a, an opportunity to use Null Oil, but I think Basilicum Gray A is a little lighter, so the contrast will not be so stark, which is not what I want right now. Um, but also, I think it, uh, it flows better into the cracks and doesn't leave tide marks as much. So if I mess up, it's easier to correct. Just going to get it in there. Wipe off a little bit of extra that I got on there. 
and just being very careful. I may actually need a smaller brush for this, but I'm just putting it in all the panel lines. Get some water on this brush. There we go. Got a little bit of dry paint on this brush from the last time I used it. There we go. So now, the smaller brush, I'm gonna go in and just do the cracks and crevices of this armor. Nope, I lied. I like the other brush better. <laughs> Sometimes, even though a brush is bigger or smaller, sometimes other brushes will just feel better. I'm going to get the, uh, the joints in his armor here. Make those a darker color. And this one right there. And I'm going to get this little line right there. And um, you do have the option, if you're painting a white scar like this, you do have the option of actually doing these last two steps I've done in reverse. You could put these, put the basilicum gray in the cracks and then dry brush them. Um, you will probably have to go back over some parts of the basilicum gray, but that wouldn't be the biggest of deals. I think it would still work just fine. And you don't, just like how edge, I've edge highlighted things before, you don't have to go into every single crack and crevice, just enough of them so that there is some contrast on the miniature. Since white will not shade very dark, I personally feel that you need to go in and do a little bit more of it. up here in his helmet and there are a couple places you can skip I'll go over those when I get to them Nor places that you would normally think you would need to put it but places that you can skip for reasons uh, so this is one of them this like eyepiece here you don't need to go you don't need to put a line in between there because it's gonna be a different color um, and so there's going to be natural contrast there without us having to do anything. You just want to be putting this places where white is going to butt up against white. I'm just going to get his finger joints there. Okay, the front of him looks good. Oh, I'm just going to get this little indentation, whatever this is there. And the same thing here. Then I'm going to move to the back of the figure. I'm going to get that right there. And then these lines here. Just being very careful. This, um, I don't know the properties exactly of contrast paint, but it feels like it's more viscous than um, null oil. And so if you make a mistake, it seems to be that if you wipe it away, you leave less or fewer tide marks behind which is a bonus because I don't want to have to go back over and do my white again just gonna get it down in there in the boot and then on this little these guys have a lot of squares on their miniatures and if you're wondering about this guy um He's not a tactical from the the normal kit. He is a Space Marine Heroes tactical marine. So he's slightly bigger and he's a different pose than you might expect coming out of the tactical marine kit. If you can get your hands on them, I highly recommend these Space Marine Heroes marines for tacticals. They're, in my opinion, much cooler Oh, their poses are better. They look better because they're a little bigger. I just think they're all around better figures. 
I'm just going to get some of that. Oh, too much. And I can just wipe it off. And then get up here. And up there. A little too much. We can come back and fix that in a minute, though. And then I'm just going to do in here. On the bottom of these exhaust ports. And then the last part I'm going to do is the little rim here. And the shoulder pads is another one of these spots where you might think a black line would be necessary. You can obviously put one there. You don't need to though because the rims of the shoulder pads are going to be red. So that's that step done. Just giving him a little more contrast between the white parts. Now I'm going to move on to the red and you could do this with a normal paint but I like doing it with contrast paint. So for this, I'm going to use Blood Angels Red. And we're going to do his shoulder pads, shoulder pad rims with this color. Um, this mi miniature specifically doesn't have individual knee pads, so we won't be doing that, even though I normally would. Um, so we might just have to look around and see what else needs to be red, but nothing else might need to be red. So we'll see. We'll see how we go. I'm going to start with the rims here. I'm going to do the back first. And if you're doing this with contrast paint, you just want to make sure that you get the paint into these indentations here. It can be a little tricky sometimes. They like to fight you. I think it's actually the surface tension of the paint that's fighting you more, but just want to make sure you get them in there. And then you just got to be really careful with this because you don't want to spill over onto your white. It is fixable. But if we can avoid it, we should. Flip it around here. Do the underside. Man. Hands got the shakes today. Either not enough caffeine or too much caffeine. I'm not sure which, to be honest. If you do have a... If your hands are shaky, either because of an external stimulant like caffeine, or just some people's hands are just naturally shaky, um, it's good to find a brace position that immobilizes as many muscles as possible. In this case, I'm doing wrists on the table, and that can really help um, any shaking that you might have in your hands. So let's see, in this case, I think I just had too many cups of coffee over the past couple days. All right, that'll work for that rim. We're gonna do the same thing over here. And I think because he doesn't have any individualized knee pads like some of his squad mates do, I'm going to do the Aquila on his chest in gold. I mean in red, sorry, in red. Normally I would do it in gold, but in this case I'm going to do it in red, I think, so that there's some more red on him. I'm just going to do that right now. And I think this combined with the the uh, chapter symbol we're going to paint on him I think will will be plenty of red. I think a red Aquila is like a, a Terminator thing maybe? I feel like a red Aquila means something but I do not recall what it is. All right, so then we're gonna move on to the weapons. And for that, I am just going to go, normally I might paint the weapons with a color and then do some contrast over it. But in this case, I'm just gonna go straight to the Black Templar and I'm just gonna completely coat the weapons. We'll come back after that and put some highlights on them. Jazz them up a little bit.
just making sure to avoid where it touches the shoulder pad and where it touches his hand. Don't want his fingers to get this contrast paint on it. At least as much as possible. Just always make sure to get the underside of things. I will sometimes forget to paint the underside of things and can go unnoticed for quite a while since usually you don't see the bottoms of your miniatures, but eventually you'll see it and you'll kick yourself. So there's that done. Now I'm going to do his bolt pistol. I'm going to do this decoration down here at the bottom of his pistol also. And all of that on the back there. And then we'll have to leave this to dry for a bit because we can't start applying the highlights immediately after we do the black because it is contrast paint, so it stays wetter for longer. That is one potential downside, is that you have to move on to a different part of the miniature when using contrast paint, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. So we're going to move on and do the leather now. He has, doesn't have a ton of leather on him, it's just basically the bolt pistol holster and the belt. Um, and I have some guys I painted earlier and I don't think they don't have holsters they're terminators so they don't have holsters or anything so I can't I don't have to worry about matching them because I would like the army to be cohesive so since we don't have to worry about matching we're just going to go to the greatest brown there is Gorthor Brown I'm going to paint his belt and the bolt pistol holster Make sure this is completely coated. He's got a got a thigh strap here, so I'll make sure to get that also. I guess he doesn't want his holster wiggling around. And then we'll have to see, but I think our Black Templar will be dry enough after this to go back and start doing highlights on that. When you're trying to paint your Droog and knock over the open bottle of Apothecary White. Yikes. That is a problem. Go get yourself a a contrast paint holder. I can highly recommend a Gatorade cap. That works great. GW also makes a tool or a thing for it. It's expensive though and unnecessary. But cut a hole in a Gatorade cap, you'll be all set. Put your paint in there. All right, so that's the leather done. No, it's not. I didn't do the belt. I only did the holster. Let's get this, get this color right back out again and do the rest of the belt. Alrighty. There we go. And the lovely thing about painting white scars, which is not... I'm going to say it's, this is a top tip. It's not really a good tip, because, you know, just paint them originally. But... If you paint a white scar and you hold off and don't paint the chapter symbol immediately, you can because they're white, you can always transition them to something else. 
So I transitioned, I painted a couple white scars and then transitioned them to crimson fists. Like this, by just painting over the white with a blue contrast paint. So that is something to think about, is if you can't decide what, uh, what marine chapter to paint, paint them white scars and then transition them to whatever you want later. I'm not sure how top that tip really is, but I'm going to call it a top tip. All right, there's the rest of the belt and the pouches on the back of him all done. And let's see what we have left. I think we can move on to the silver now. He's got a bunch of silver on him, um, as well as what's going to be on the guns. So we can start with what's on him and then finish with what's on the guns. We are going to use for this... Hmm, which silver do I want to use? I think I'm going to use Iron Breaker for this. Because we are going to darken it down. So, the uh, it was between this and Grey Knight Steel. And we're going to darken it down so the Grey Knight Steel is going to lose most of its bluish tint anyway. So it doesn't not really necessary so I'm just gonna go in and paint these little things and when you're painting silver especially on Space Marines um, I find anyway that you don't really have to be consistent in too many things across like whole squads just so that you have some metal stuff on your Space Marine people will get the idea um, people expect there to be metal on space marines so as long as you have some silver some places like you could do some of these belt buckle things in silver or you could just mess up and wipe your brush across it um you could do some of those in silver some in not silver you don't have to be super consistent at least in my opinion some people ultramarine players probably will say that no everything has to be exactly the same that's why they're ultramarine players, so. Just gonna paint this silver. I guess I'll get these rivets while we're here. Just do a little tap on each one of them. And then let's see what else needs to be silver. Oh, we'll get the grenade while we're here. I'm going to go over the grenade with a contrast paint later, but nice metallic base for it. Never hurt. Not required, though. All right, and then I'm going to go to the guns. I started with this. I started with the bolter, not the bolt pistol. So this will be slightly drier, so I'll start here. And I'm just going to pick out some things that could be silver. So I'm going to do this square in silver, <laughs> rectangle. Um, this is an older pattern bolter. Not sure exactly what pattern it is, but it's definitely different than the current bolters. So it doesn't have as much detail on it. But I'm just going to pick out a couple things. Um, I think I'll do the barrel that's sticking out here in silver. And these little bits here. This again is just picking out some random stuff. It doesn't have to be super precise. Just pick out some stuff so that there is silver on the gun. You just want to try to have, basically have two tones on anything that you, uh, you put color on. And that doesn't mean, like, so, for instance, his chest would be something you'd want to have two tones on. Not that... You need to have two colors on the eagle and two colors on those and two colors, all that. You just need to have two colors in each general area. So in this case, the bolter is a general area. It's probably good to have two colors on it. At least, of course. There's always... You can always go for more. All right. I'm actually going to put uh, silver on this thing right here on the side of his head. And then let's go over to the bolt pistol... Let's see what we got. We got a skull and some rivets. We'll do these rivets. I think I do want a little bit of gold on him, so I'll save that skull for gold. 
do this part of the barrel again. Ooh, what did I touch? Nothing. Cool. <laughs> Thought I touched my brush to the miniature, but I didn't. Do this. Rivets on the other side. Just a little touch. This circle right there. That little thing. These. All right. And that, I think, will be that on the silver. I'm going to pull out the gold since I'm thinking about it. I'm going to use Retributor Gold for this. Where is it? Retributor Gold. Retributor Armor. Sorry. Retributor Armor. And I'm just going to do this little metal thing on his belt that I painted earlier. There's a skull on it. I'm going to put some gold on that skull. Put some gold on this skull. And then I believe there's one on the other side. Yes, there is. Wonderful. And I think that's it. Yep, I'm just going to get the side of this skull that I missed here. There we go. Alrighty. Then I'm going to do the eyeballs. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do the eyeballs. I'm going to use, for that, I'm going to use Talisar Blue. I'm just going to try to be as careful as possible when getting these. So I'm just going to go in, start at the inner corner, and drag it up, just so that the back, or the yeah, the corner of the eye that's farther back will be darker than the inner part. Like that. And then I'll also do this lens at the same time. For this, you want the bottom part of the lens to be darker. I'm just going to get this blue off of here. I might need to highlight this, this blue back off. No, we're fine. Okay. So there's the eyes done. I think now I'm going to go back to my Basilicum Gray. And I'm going to wash this over all the silver we did. As well as do a little bit more on the helmet. The helmet's looking a little monotone. So I'm going to put it some right in there. Just pull it back out so you can see the grate a little bit. Just like that. And then I'm going to do it right here along this line. And then along this detail here. There. Now his, his head's looking a little more detailed. So now I'm just going to put this all over the silver we did. As well as over the brown and the gold. Gonna mess up and get it on the white. Always. I never won't. That's okay. Just fix it real quick. And then continue. I'm gonna do it all over the bolter. Since the bolter is already black, it does not matter. Let's see what else this one. like that and get the other side of the leather here okay oh this silver bit right here just like that again making sure the darker part is on the bottom I'm going to go over this again real quick. Give that a second coat. A little more definition. Alright. 
We're almost done with him, to be honest. Let's just see what else needs to be done. Oh, we got to do the purity seal. So I'm going to start with some skeleton horde for that. And just like the last time I painted a purity seal, because we already have red as a secondary color on this guy, I'm going to think about a different color for the purity seals um, wax part. Um, in this case, though, last time I did purple. In this case, I'm just going to do a darker red. I think that'll be enough to differentiate it, especially since it's pretty close to this red right here. You'll be able to tell the difference. So for that, I'm going to use Flesh Terror Red. Just going to do that really quick. a little too much paint on there. Pull it off just a little bit. Get the back of it. Excellent. There's the purity seal done. All right. Now we're going to move on to a quick edge highlight of the red. For that we are going to use Wild Rider Red. And I'm just going to highlight all the red parts on him. This is uh, really moving towards an orange color. But we're going to use it very sparingly. So we hopefully will not turn our red orange. So I'm just going to do a little highlight up here at the top of this. Eagle. Aquila, rather. Right up there. And then one along the feather line here. Again on the other side. And then just quickly right there. That'll work. And then, I don't know if you can see that. And then on the edges of the shoulder pads here. I'll get that orange flake off in a minute. right there and then down here and then up here a little too much just wipe it off go again all right and that'll work for that so then just checking to see if our black is dry not quite yet, so I'm going to edge highlight the leather. I'm going to use Steel Legion Drab for this. I'm just going to do it really quick. Run it down the edges of this leather. Just like that. And then get these back pouches here. Just so there's a little definition. Run along the belt there. Along the belt there. And along his thigh strap here. Just like that. That'll do. All right, and then I think our black is dry enough now. So we're going to get our Iron Breaker back. Or is it Iron Breaker? And going to dry brush a little bit of this Iron Breaker onto uh, the weapons. Just so they have a little bit more highlight and contrast to them. So getting, getting a decent sized brush maybe getting some silver on it wiping most of it off and then I'm just gonna start at the top and come down flip it over and do the same thing and then on the bolter the top and come down and top and come down 
and that way we'll catch the edges of the bolter but not completely wipe out the black all right and that will be that done except for the chapter symbol so for the chapter symbol I'm gonna use Mephiston red and I'm gonna go about it I'm gonna turn one of my other guys around here as um, as, a, as an example and we're gonna do it just like I did my last freehand and I how I do all my freehands which is to break down the symbol into discernible pieces so on this guy it's a lightning bolt so we're gonna do it on this shoulder pad the terminator has his crux on the other shoulder so it had to be over here we're gonna do it on this shoulder pad this time so to do this lightning bolt we are going to draw a line straight down well not straight diagonally down the shoulder pad just like that and then we're going to let's see this is reversed for me now so draw the line yep okay and we're going to come like this and like this draw another line midway through then draw another line up here going this way and then we're just going to play connect the dots so i'm going to come down and connect these two right here and then fill this in and then on the other side I'm going to come down and connect the dots right here fill that in just make sure my corners are nice and crisp Make sure it's all filled in nicely. That looks good to me for a tactical marine anyway. Mm. I said that and then I looked at it. I'm just going to sharpen the point of the lightning bolt really quick. That's better. And then I'm going to take my red highlight color from before, Wild Rider Red, and I'm just going to do a quick highlight on the top line, just like that, and then running down the side, like that. And like that and right there and there you go there's your chapter symbol a lightning bolt so he's basically done at this point um, he's not not too complicated he's got a couple just a couple colors on him and then he's not oh he's not done it's not quite done gonna use plague bearer flesh and I'm going to paint the grenade here just give it a nice green tint I like green grenades can probably be any color but I like green grenades so then he's done um, but because I believe I still have time yes yeah, only 140 so I'm going to do something that is very convenient for this guy and these miniatures is that you can fully assemble them but keep them removable from their base so I'm just gonna I know it's horrible watching a fully painted miniature, but I'm just going to grab them, pull them right off the base. And then make sure he's still, he's still all good. He is still all good. And then I'm going to paint the base real quick. So I'm going to use this, this guy as reference back here. So I'm going to do the checkers first. I'm going to use Corvus Black for these checkers. And I'm just going to pick a checker here. Um, I'll go with this one will be the starting black one. And then just alternate the pattern.
making sure to get in here also. Okay. Got some more checkers up here. This, in this case, it's separated by a barrier, but if you are painting checkers and there's no barrier, you want to make sure to keep your pattern consistent throughout your checkers. Okay, and the last checker down here. Okay, all set on those. So then, let's just take a look at this guy's base here. Um, all right, I will do the skeleton horde on the dirt parts of this base. And this can get on other stuff. It's not a big deal because it's a base, so there's there's dirt probably all over everything. I'm just going to make sure it gets all up in here. In between the cracks of things. Even in there. Get it over here. All right, that looks good. Oh, just a little bit more right there. That looks good. Then I'm gonna go um, use Gore Grunt of Fur. This is gonna be for the brick or like stone part of this base. So it's gonna be all this. All that in there, and up here. Just making sure to cover all the white primer. You don't want his base to look like part of his armor. That would be strange. I'm just going to do the side of this here, getting in up to the up to the uh, checkers, but not or up to the tiles, I guess, but not all the way onto them. Down to the dirt layer. Alrighty. Oh, nope. A little bit more in here. Let's cover that up. And on the side here. Alright, so there's that part done. Then we will do the silver. And I'm going to use. Hmm. For this silver, I will use a different silver. I guess I'll use um. I guess I'll use this. I'll use granite steel. Just so it's a little different from our silver that's on our miniature. And I'm just going to get the shell casings here. Pick them out individually. And then all these pipes and stuff. Basically everything else on this base is metal. Go along these rivets. 
bits here. Making sure to get the side and this part that comes off the base here. And then these rivets, this rivet bar down here, and then the grate. Alright, and that's all the silver on the base. So then, if we want, you could be done basically right here. I'm just going to go in and using Scrag Brown, I'm going to just do a little highlight on the masonry parts here. Just along the edges. And down in here. Doesn't have to be super consistent because it is a broken building or broken floor. But just so that there's some different colors on it. That'll do. And then for the last time, get some, not Black Templar, get some Basilicum Gray. Go over the silver really quick. It is still a little bit wet, but that's okay. It will mix in. Wipe this mistake off I just made. There we go. And then it'll mix in slightly with this silver. It'll cause a cause an effect that will make it look a little weathered. Totally okay for our situation because it is a base. Pop some of them in there. All right, and then the base is done. You could add some tufts if you wanted to. Um, I happen to have them right here, so I guess I will. I'm just gonna grab a couple tufts using their self-adhesiveness. Just stick one right there. And maybe another one right here. I'm just using Army Painter Tufts for this. They're widely available. Just like that. And then I'm going to stick this miniature back on. And just pegs there. And then all that's left is paint the base rim. I'm not going to paint the base rim right this second. Because I want to make sure he's completely dry before I handle him that much. Um, but otherwise, he is ready to go. So yeah, that's a quick and easy white scar that like I said if you wanted to you could turn into something else later so everybody should paint white scars with no exception but that's it for this episode thank you everybody for watching and I will hopefully see you next week